Because honestly, I did not accept myself. I did not ex accept my skin tone. I did not embrace my melanin because I wanted to be them so bad. Michelle back with another video another car chronicles for you and today we are going to talk about colorism because in 2019 let's just talk about it you know and I've always wanted to cover this subject if I ever did YouTube so I definitely want to cover this subject you know and just speak from my experience from it so <laughs> let's uh, define colorism Colorism is a form of prejudice or discrimination in which people are treated differently based on the social meanings attached to skin color. Meaning, for example, the brown paper bag test. This example of the discrimination is many churches, fraternities, and nightclubs use the paper brown test bag principle as a test of entrance. People at these organizations would take a brown paper bag and hold it against a person's skin. If a person was lighter than the bag, he or she was admitted. And obviously, if she was, he or she was darker than the paper bag, they were not. Now, this is sad to me because I feel like, figuratively speaking, we're still using that paper brown, that paper brown, <laughs> that brown paper bag test. And being a dark skinned woman, when I was younger, I used to always kind of believe in that, you know, I always wished I was lighter or had the curly long hair and, you know, stuff like that. As I grew up and grew out of it, it made me so happy that I have women to look up to like uh, Oprah, Whoopi Goldberg, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Denai Guer Guerrera, Gabrielle Union. Uh, love and hip hop members Juju and Amara La Negra, India Ivory, just so many other women that I can look up to and say, oh, you can be beautiful and be dark. You can be beautiful because you're dark skinned. Not, oh, uh, what, what's the phrase that people say? Oh, you're pretty for a dark skinned girl. You know how much I hate that phrase. Do you know how much any dark skinned girl hates that phrase? What I'm trying to say is, not just for dark skinned women, but for our light skinned counterparts too. We don't need to go to head to head like this. There don't need to be a versus and versus. Because at the end of the day, we're all still black. We're all still black and every other nationality is looking at us. Every other nationality is looking at us and saying, if they can't even respect themselves, why should we respect them? That should give us something to think about. We should come, we should be able to, and I see us finally now coming united to, in all shades, to be black and to be beautiful and to be bold and to be wonderful. And I'm not gonna say that our light-skinned counterparts don't face any problems because unfortunately they do. Light, our light-skinned counterparts, they're looked at as being, well, the women, they're looked at as being just like trophy wives or soft and not, don't speak well. Not that they don't speak well. You know, they can't speak up for themselves. They're just soft. They're weak. Um... They're more dainty, which I see just as many strong, light-skinned women as, and just as many weaker, uh, dark, dark-skinned women, you know? And that's a stigma that needs to be put to bed. Like, we are great in all shades. That's what makes us so great as a culture, that we have so many, there's, there's such a variety of us that we should, ooh, what was that? 
thought that was a spider, excuse me. That we should be able to learn from each other, but we can't when we're so busy butting heads with each other and going against each other because that's what society has taught us. That's what the Jim Crow era has taught us. That's what our slave masters taught us, you know? And I wanted to approach this topic cautiously because I'm only speaking from my experience and what I went through and you know what I see in the media nowadays and what I grew up seeing and I'm sorry if it's not coming off where I'm talking a lot or I'm taking pauses I'm just trying my gears are just going in my head trying to word it correctly trying to word it correctly as so I get my point that I get my point across that through my eyes and anyone who may be darker or, or like me because before I didn't see light skinned people having a problem with everything I felt like they were excelling more people respected them more or paid attention to them more and thinking again this is from my experience thinking that they're smarter more educated more well spoken now it's taking a lot for me <laughs> to just speak in front of a camera but that doesn't mean I'm not well spoken um but you sorry I feel like I'm jumping from subject to subject but you guys what I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you guys get what I'm saying and for my again from my experience I was always treated from my more light-skinned friends to be the loud the ghetto one the ratchet one and I thought I had to keep up that appearance for them to like me or accept me because honestly I did not accept myself I did not accept except my skin tone I did not embrace my melanin because I wanted to be them so bad and I feel like I'm doing pretty good now once I've done my self acceptance and finally able to love myself for once talk about it in the comments I'm trying to hopefully out trying to engage people let me know how you've dealt with colorism your experience as a light-skinned woman or a dark-skinned woman you know tell me your experience tell me what you personally ex experience when it comes to that even when if you didn't experience anything let me know how you feel about this topic I hope I'm not leaving anything out. If not, there will be a part two to this video. Just let me know how you feel about being a dark-skinned woman or being a light-skinned woman. Are you still having trouble accepting yourself, whether it be in one shade or the other? Uh, what do you think about society's standards for us as black and Latino women, even as Asian women? This, this conversation is open to everybody who experiences colorism. Because not only black people experience colorism, there's uh, Spanish people, well, Latina, the Latino community, they experience colorism. The Asian community, they experience colorism. The East Indian community, they experience co colorism. And so on and so forth. So I would like everybody's input. What do you guys think? How... What, what, what is the solutions? Let's talk about it. In the comment section. I always read my comments. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Like I said, comment, subscribe, ring my bell, and follow me on all social media platforms. It has been a good talk. I like this talk. It feels 
was good. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. I will be seeing you soon. Also, give me questions on my Instagram. DM me on Instagram or Twitter because I want to do a small YouTuber um, tag. And I would like a... I would like to do that Q&A. So give me questions that you would like to know about me. I am open to every question. I am willing to ask almost every question. So do that for me. And please, 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 guys, have a blessed day. And I will see you guys soon with that video and a couple more other videos and surprises I got for you guys finally that I'm comfortable. You guys have a wonderful day. Stay blessed, stay hydrated, and elevate, and bye-bye. <laughs> when I heard that comment, I, I did have to pause, but then I had to dig deeper and know who I was as an African-American woman and say, I don't give a what she wants to see on the panel. I'm here, as brown as I am, as black and as beautiful as I am, and if I rip this hair off, yes, I do have naps, and it's okay. So, Lord, a lot of people don't identify you as black. So you have a black woman who said, I was offended by it being a black woman of darker skin. So do you think you offended black women? No, not at all. I'm black. But then why bring it up? Again. If you are black, keep why bring around, that up? Joking around. Ask why, her. Ask why, her. Why make tone such a subject to say, if you are black and you're standing in it, stand in it in all shades.